Good afternoon, morning, my dudes. It's Wednesday and welcome to your bias guide for the week. We are going to be doing a top 10 from the normal deal section. So more of a, as per usual, bias guide for you this week. So I hope it's within expectations. A user commented last week that they weren't expecting the news episode. So I'm hoping that it was a good thing, that you enjoyed it equally. And please, or as always, let me know in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's jump straight into the top 10. Starting off the top 10 and number 10, we got to throw in the Evtex Stealth mouse pads because these are a whole hundred bucks. It's an entire desk mat. It's so thick you could almost use it as a pillow at a LAN and it's got a braided edge. It's got proper rubberizing. You'll know about the rubberizing when you open up the package and you smell it. That's for damn sure. It's got a very pungent rubbery smell to double confirm that it is, well, just a rub nice rubberized base with a good old speed cloth on top. And number nine is something that's criminally underrated. And if you're buying in the budget mouse sort of bracket, just have a look at the Arosi 5i Ultralight. It's literally a model of, uh, basically identical. It's even got the 3389 from Pixart. It's got Omron switches as well. Like it's basically the same. They just marketed it very poorly. It's 74 grams, the mouse. So it's five grams heavier than a model O, which is, you know, about 69. Nice in general. And it, it's just good. I, I did a review on this. Um, I will do a pop out for you with a banner with that. But the tracking, the buttons, everything, it felt exactly the same as the model. And number eight is something I've just reviewed this premium MX mechanical wireless from Logitech. It was, it has so far been the best one that I've reviewed in this price bracket, uh, especially considering it's 2700 Rand. It comes with a tier warranty and it's Mac compatible. So if you've got multiple systems that you want to connect to and just seamlessly sort of tab between with one keyboard, then this is perfect for that. If you want just a really good wireless keyboard for your working environment, this is what I would suggest, especially because of the switch quality. Out of all the low profile switches and stuff I've used so far, these are significantly better than the rest. Coming in at number seven is the way to fight stage six load shedding. It's maybe time to consider getting a UPS backup for your router because, uh, you know, ESCOM's in has reached stage six levels where we are short 17,000 megawatts and the situation probably isn't going to be improving soon. So something like this, especially at this sort of price point right now, 900 bucks to keep your router online for four hour stints is probably going to be a good idea, especially if you need to work from home, then this might be a good avenue for you. If you used a, a, an inverter into this, it would be even obviously better and work even better and longer. So yeah, maybe adding this just for your router might be a good idea, but no. Running at the top of number six, it's literally my keyboard. This is what I use in it as a daily driver. And I can't tell you how much better it has been going modular. I have already had some switches give me a bit of issue and I literally just have them in a drawer next to me, pull it out, take out the switch, put in a new one and I'm off to the races as it were. So just for convenience, right to repair, etc. These are fantastic. The frame is one and a half kilograms worth of aluminium and that you should feasibly have for the rest of your life. The volume knob on the top round is the most satisfying dial you will ever use on a keyboard. Pretty much it's in that Corsair. It feels really good sort of thing and you can program it. It's a button as well. It can be used to mute, unmute and a variety of other stuff. Well, basically every single key on this is programmable. It's the most customizable keyboard experience and it really is the final sort of testament to keyboard it's the last it's the final pip on the scale there's the best way i could describe it at number five it's the hikvision g4000 it's an insanely well-priced gen 4 nvme five-year warranty 1300 bucks kind of mad read and write we'll have to see how accurate these are i need to get a sample but so far with my e2000 and with my e1000 they were very much in line with their quoted speeds so it should be pretty damn good five-year warranty gen 4 1300 rand nuts it's premium ddr4 at number four for you you yeah, see what i did there i stole a vertical advert for this just don't tell them please because i you know i like to keep this job and everything in this role i quite enjoy it anyway so yeah this thing is still 19 41 33 so it's very very sharp timed very good you know in general uh my compatibility at least has been very good with 88 xpg so far i haven't had a single fault on amd or intel with any kit that i've used so I can vouch for these and these heat sinks on these things are so beefy and like otherworldly overbrought. It literally results in like a five degree better running temperature than their competitors. So yeah, 
and it's XPG. I'm liking it. And number three is the cheapest way to go 144 or the best way to go 144, not just the cheapest. This is a 165 one millisecond and it's IPS. It gets 92% of the DCI-P3 color gamut. See, I remember you know, from the last time I spoke about this. I speak about this one, it's a lot. As long as it's up, it's pretty much the best, best one to get because they also give you a four year warranty, which is a, just a year longer. Cost of ownership argument becomes significantly better, but the stand, the periscope neck, the panel is just amazing. The only thing I don't like is the back of these panels. It's just something I'm gonna keep saying it, ASC. I know you're watching. I know you're out there and you're watching these videos because the back of the here, just make it from like less kitschy plastic that I can find it like my local China Mall, please and thank you. Then your monitor is absolutely perfect. Thanks, appreciate you guys. And number two is one of the like things that I was really hoping we would see coming to the eTech store because now this is the cheapest way to go 4K and 144 hertz is with these Neo QLEDs from Samsung. I've been dying for these to come to the store. I did the QN90B, which is a bit better spec than obviously the QN90A is a little bit under spec compared but these are still the cheapest ways to get a proper 4K IPS. And then they have a quantum dot layer on top, which just takes the DCI-P3 rating over 100%. So it's the best quality color and resolution and refresh rate you're probably going to be able to get at the price. If you look at the competitors and stuff, you're getting a 1440p27. And I would say that overall that that is a better to monitor as it were. But if you just want a really big thing to play media back and games and stuff on and you're not going to be sitting right on top of it, then these are going to be the best panels that you can get. I'm dying for the 50 inch Q and 90 b to come to the store because it would probably be about the 12, 13,000 Rand mark. And then that's just unequivocally the best panel at that price. So let's hope they continue to make waves into EVTEC. But for now, at least you can get the 43 inch. And then the number one spot, it's got to go to the Dell because like, as I just said, price versus performance, this is probably the best panel that you're going to be able to buy right now. It's 32 inch, 1440p, 165 hertz. It is VA, but does still have a one millisecond response time. And having tested the older version of this panel, I can attest to it not having a lot of smear. It's significantly reduced compared to the 27 was a 1080p that I've got. It's day and night comparably between the two. 1800R curve is really nice to have as well. I've grown accustomed to it. It, it, it is nice when you do have it and it is centered and in the correct position. 165 hertz, as we said, on the DP, um, as I said, VA. It is, however, got a pretty good candelimeter squared. Most of them in this sort of price bracket are at 250. So it's a spec up in every single area. And then it's covered by Dell's premium panel guarantee. So even one stuck or dead pixel, they replace the whole panel. And I don't think you can put a price on that. Anywho, that is all I have for you in this week's top 10. We will be continuing with some Elgato products. I'm going to try and finish those up before I take a small break. And then we'll be back with more content. I hope you guys have had a fantastic Q1 as we break in now into Q in the beginning of quarter two. And that your April and Easter have been absolutely fantastic. Until next time, I hope you guys stay safe, keep well, and I will see you on the flip side. Mm -hmm.